I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Well, here we are at Rama Praise again, and we have a great program today for you. In fact, Miss Lynette is speaking today. And so, uh, you know, she's a good speaker, maybe better than me. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, honey, uh, today, you know, I'm talking about, you know, uh, in Bible prophecy, we know that in the last days that there will be a mighty move yes, yes. of the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, we call it the end time revival. Right. And but some, and I, I believe we're in the last days. How about you? Yeah. I believe that we are, and uh, you know. Of course, we know that that move will be here and that that move is coming. Right. But so many times uh, we, wanna, we want to tell God uh, how he needs to move in the last days. Right. Uh, because we have our own opinion of how it should be. But guess what? Our opinion may not be God's opinion. That's for sure. And so um, I know that even myself, I have seen, um, well, we need to be sensitive, first of right, all. Right. Um, I have seen people uh, recently uh, that I've just talked to personally that really didn't talk a lot about God or uh, the yeah. things of God. Right. And I have seen them, I mean, approach me and and talking and talking about uh, a God and how that we're in the last days and the mighty revival yeah. of, of people that I didn't even know that they knew that there was going to be a revival in the yeah. last days. And so uh, it's important for us not to harden our hearts. It's important for us to be open to how God wants well, to be. Right, right, yes. right. And so let's go right now where I am talking about the move of the Spirit in these last days. We got to look to God. And I see, unfortunately, the very same thing can happen in these days. I'm not criticizing any move of God, but I am warning that if you're going somewhere, just because things are happening there, you're going for the wrong reasons and you're going to thwart the move of God. You're going to thwart the move of God. We know that things are happening there at Asbury. That's wonderful. But I so appreciate the fact that actually I just, I hadn't really watched the news in a lot these days because uh, I don't know. I won't go there. But the other day I just happened to turn on and uh, Tucker Carlson was on. And he started talking about the Asbury, Asbury move. And he showed some pictures, you know, of the young people praising God. And um, he said some very positive things. And then he said, and I was going to go to see for myself. But he said, I, you know, as I called, they responded to me and said, we appreciate you. We appreciate what you're doing but we ask that you not come because this is not a place for news media. This is a place that people are connecting with God. And I appreciate that. And as I actually, as I was thinking about this just a while ago, the thoughts came to me. How, do, how does God talk to you? 
usually by thoughts. The thoughts came to me because I know there were there are people that you know we don't we don't advertise. Oh, you need to come to Winter Bible Seminar. We don't we don't do that hype marketing because we want the people here that God is moving on so that God can do what he wants to do. And I mean, there were people that called me and said, I am I mean, just, I wasn't coming. I wasn't coming. I was going to watch online, but they said, we got to be there. I'm making plans. I'm going to, I'm going to get on the plane and I'm coming because there's just something I've got to be there. And I was thinking about this as Denise was telling me that there was an outbreak at ORU and in chapel, you know, the students were just praising God and just, and I thought, you know, because I, I know that in these, this last day revival, it's not going to be just in one place. No, it's not going to be in just one place. And we don't have to go to a place in order to find our place. Oh, that's good. And I thought about it because, you know, I, I a lot of times I, I think a lot and I, and sometimes, and I know over, oh, the past decade and stuff, and I, I just think, God, why, why are, they, I don't see, I see people that say that they're Christians, but I don't see a lot of fruit. I don't see a lot of change in their lives. And I, I'm not judging, and I'm not saying that they're not, they haven't accepted Christ as their Savior, but something more needs to happen. I don't, I don't see a lot of, I'm sorry, God, I messed up. I just say, oh, God's grace is sufficient. Thank you, Father. You, oh, some of these songs just get me. You love me in spite of. And he does love us in spite of. But listen, he expects us to change. And all the Pentecostal people can say what? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Right, Bob. <laughs> and, you know, I, I ponder this. I think about it. I, I ask God for answers. And as I, that just came, and this just came to me a while ago. May I can say it as God told it to me. This move of God will be different. Ah, man paseli, e pasuli gimananshi, e librigabashi. For you see, there are different reasons for this move. There are, ah, how do I say that, God? There are different things that need to happen in this move. And so he said to me, there will be moves over here of salvation. There will be moves over here of, of uh, submission, uh, of, of uh, calling out to God, of, of a repent. That's it, repentance. I haven't seen a lot of repentance lately. Of repentance. Oh, Pache Libri Gabanshi, but he said this move. Ah, men say Libri Doshi. This move in your midst is a move of drawing closer to God, listening to my voice. Ah, man, Pache, and fulfilling the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. And so you see this move of revival in our midst is different 
from the moves in other places. It's different, guys. Because you see, we know the truth. But we've let some of it slip. We're not as intense about some things as we used to be. We're not as intense about our confessions as we used to be. We're not as, uh, as ex and, uh, we're not, we don't use our faith as much as we used to. We're not as excited about the things of God as we used to be. Oh yeah, I know. We all have battle scars. We've all had disappointments. I know that when came 2004 and we knew the direction. I knew that I would be doing the prayer in the morning as Brother Hagen always did. And I will tell you, I was scared silly. And I said, as Paul, I come to you in trembling because I know nothing but the power of God. And so I said, God, I need a confirmation from you. And I said, God, you know what? This is a winter Bible seminar. And we've had some good weather in winter Bible seminar. Well, we've had some lousy weather in winter Bible seminar in all the years that we've had winter Bible seminar. So this is 2004. I said, God, just for me, just for me, I need good weather. If it's for nobody else but me, I need good weather. And God granted it. He knew I needed that. I needed that. Oh, it's just a, you know, frivolous request. But he cares about all of our requests. And so, you know, every year, good weather, good weather, good yet weather. And then 2022 came. <laughs> Horrible weather. Where's Marty? <laughs> he probably isn't even here because he didn't want me to pick on him. The girls wanted to go sledding. <laughs> and I, well, I'll tell you, I was disappointed. I was disappointed. And you know, always, everybody looks at me, oh, well, she's the weather woman. And it appeared to be a failure. But that's what the enemy would try to do. Oh, man, passe elianton jing batashi. There are those of you out here. Because there were things that you have asked God for and it didn't happen. Didn't happen. And because of that, you've hardened your heart. You've hardened your heart. And when we harden our heart, we can't hear from God. We can't hear from God. And so we cannot let seemingly failures keep us from receiving everything that God has for us and to following his plan. Now, you know, 
I've been in this way a long time. As the old people would say, they would say, I've been in the way. Well, yeah, sometimes they've been in the way. They need to get out of the way. <laughs> but let's say it this way. I've been a, a Christian long enough. My foundation is strong. And though that I was sitting down here, I, our people were trying to find ice melt. And I was sitting down here doling out money where they would find ice melt during the service to get things presentable. I did not lose my faith in God. I did not lose my faith in God. And yet, this year I said, God, I don't need a repeat of last year. I don't need that repeat. But he was so this morning, so, and it wasn't even in my sermon. God, this morning just, yeah, just messed up my sermon. But he does that a lot because he knows that I don't like it. (laughs) I want you to turn over to Hebrews 2. Now we're going to pray in a few minutes. Hebrews 2. I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation. There was a warning here, and I believe that we need to heed this warning. It says, so we must listen, starting with verse 1. So we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard. Or we may drift away from it. For the message God delivered through angels has already, has always stood firm in every violation of the law and every act of disobedience was punished. So what makes us think we can escape if we ignore this great salvation that was first announced by the Lord Jesus himself? And then delivered to us by those who heard him speak. And God confirmed by the message by giving signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit he chose. Now, I want you to go to um, chapter 3. Starting with verse 1. Once again in the New Living Translation it says... And so, dear brothers and sisters who belong to God, do you belong to God? And are partners with those called to heaven, think carefully about this Jesus whom we declare to be God's messenger and high priest. For he was faithful to God who appointed him, just as Moses served faithfully when he was entrusted with God's entire house. But Jesus deserves far more glory than Moses, just as a person who builds a house deserves more praise than the house itself. For every house has a builder, but the one who built everything is God. Moses was certainly faithful in God's house as a servant. His work was an illustration of the truths God would reveal later. But Christ, as the Son, is in charge of God's entire house. And we are God's house if we keep our courage and remain confident in our hope in Christ. That is why the Holy Spirit says, Today, when you hear His voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled, when they tested me in the wilderness. There your ancestors tested and tried my patience, even though they saw my miracles for 40 years. So I was angry with them. I don't tell you what, I don't want God to be angry with me. How about you? He said, so I was angry with them, and I said, their hearts always turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning your... You away from the living God. You must warn each other every day while it is still today so that none of you, so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardening against God. For if we are faithful 
to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will all share in that and all that belongs to Christ. Remember what it says today. When you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. Don't harden your hearts is in there three times. Obviously, we didn't get it the first time. It seems like that God, you know, it's like Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everything is in threes. And the Lord was just impressing on my heart this morning. Some of you, because you're not hearing from God, it's because you have hardened your heart and don't even know it. Don't even know it. Years before Pastor and I were married, I had an unfortunate engagement. And because of the verbal abuse that I received in that relationship, unknowingly to me, because you know, we as an individual, God has made us to be survivors. And so sometimes we put up, uh, what's the word I want to use? We, we put up fences to keep us from hurt so that we won't go through some of those things again and so we, are, we survive. And so when that relationship was ended, before I ever met Pastor, I determined in my heart, I'm not going to let that ever happen to me. I'm going to never let a man do that to me again. I'm going to put up a wall. Not realizing that when I entered in a relationship that God had ordained, that wall was still there. And it wasn't until God revealed to me, you got to take down the wall. You got to take down that wall. Because you are hurting your relationship. You'll never have the kind of relationship that you need as husband and wife. When the, God said, it's not good that men be alone, I will make a help meet. And they become one. And he says, you'll never become one as long as you have that wall up. And it wasn't until I said, God, I trust you. You see, the problem is the reason you've got that wall up is because you're really not trusting in God. He has your back. And though the enemy has come, and though the enemy has tried to destroy, oh, passe le brigabanchi, so many lives, in so many ways. But the Lord is saying, if you will trust me, if you will trust me, if you will allow me to heal those scars. Those scars will just be, become a, a faint memory that you will not even remember. Oh my, my, Paseli, if I could. In these last days, there will be a move of the Spirit, but we have to be open for it and we have to be ready for it. And to be ready for it is to study and to yes. see what the Word of God has to say and to follow Him, follow His plan in your life. That's right. And so this week yes, is this, a really great week yeah. uh, to listen to the voice of God. Right. Because here, Winter Bible Seminar is here. This week, February the 18th through the 23rd, it begins Sunday at 6 p.m. Yes. And then we have services really kind of all day long. Yeah, 8, 30, 9, 30, 10, 30, and 7 p.m. Yes. And uh, so, you know, 
uh, there, there is something for everybody here. Yes. So come believing and come expecting. And you can go to rhema.org and find out all about it. That's right. Our offer this month, uh, my CD, Keep the Fire Burning, uh, your dad's actually six CDs yes. of the Holy Spirit series. And I will tell you, you know, if you're there and you really do not understand uh, the place that the Holy Spirit has in our life, this is a great series yes. uh, to have. And then your book, How to Fulfill Your Divine Destiny, it's so important that we fulfill the plan that God has for right. us. That's for a gift of $40 or more. Just go right now to your device to rhema.org and order it and it'll be right out the door on the way to you. That's right. And in March, honey, we begin our Living Faith Conferences yes. in March. March the 24th through the 26th, we're going to be in Las Vegas, Nevada, Word of Life Christian Center. That's Pastors David and Vicki Sharon. Then we're going to jump over to Chandler, Arizona, which is just a part of the Phoenix, Phoenix area. area. Yes. And at uh, Faith Family Church and pastors Andy and Deb White are there. But actually all of the Rhema pastors in that area are coming together yes. at, for this conference. So, hey, we're looking for you to be there with us. It's going to be a great, great time. So we want to thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to the to world. The world. Let me speak to your hearts for just a moment. I would like to give you an opportunity to know Jesus Christ. It's a very simple thing. All you have to do is repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you that he died for my sin. I thank you that if I confess that with my mouth and believe in my heart, I shall be saved. Thank you. I'm a new person in Christ. Amen. We, as the Church of God, should bring fire to the church. We are the fire. This church is a place where people should see Jesus. They should want what we have, keeping that fire burning on the inside of you. Keep the Fire Burning, a powerful CD by Lynette Hagen. Also, six essential CDs by Kenneth E. Hagen entitled Holy Spirit Series. Plus, How to Fulfill Your Divine Destiny, a faith-building book by Kenneth W. Hagen. The book and all seven CDs can be yours today for a gift of only $40 or more by calling toll-free 1-888-PRAISE-8. Or you can log on anytime, day or night, at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.